Hey yeah, and welcome to a video exclusively of my hands. Um, I have been doing some spinning and I've discovered something interesting so I thought I would come on here and talk about it a little bit and hopefully not upload this before I actually give my friend uh, what I have spun for her. So I thought it would be a really nice thing to create a little collection for my friend. Um, it's a birthday next week. Um, of hand spun yarn from the different animals who love things in raw fleece colours. So this is a fully undyed, <coughs> excuse me, an undyed collection from uh, just all of the fleece that I've had available. So that is what's in this box. I finished it last night and I thought there's something, uh, I'd sort of feel some of the yarn, talk through it. And um, I think what I've just done is really practically understood grist um, and just talk about how different it's all been and how that was really, um, basically really interesting to me. So uh, I noticed that the the length basically is really different between some of the the different yarns of what I've got because I was like I'll measure out 10 grams and then that'll basically be the same amount of yarn for each one. No. So <laughs> the first one I spun up is this. Uh, this was the first fleece that I got. It is south down wool. Um, everything's had an initial wash. We're going to give it another wash as well. So it's it's sort of a creamy colour um, and it's 10 grams and I have got 52 yards of it. Um, I say yards, it's, I've got 52 chair backs because I wind it around the back of my chair which is 87 centimetres and a yard is 90. Um, so that's, that's what we've got there. So we've got 52 of the south down. Next up in the mixture is uh, the angora. So this is the same south down wool to create the white and then the grey tone in this is Angora. Uh, that was just harvested from some bunnies I've yet to meet. Um, this is also 10 grams, this is 51 yards. Um, so almost exactly the same and it's like 80% of the same stuff and 20% of something different so that doesn't feel all that weird that feels like sort of a certain amount of I'm still quite new to spinning so that might just be me spinning a little bit inconsistently I'm okay with that next up what we've got gonna sneeze okay um next up what we've got is a mixture of cat hair this is this is Hector this is her cat <laughs> um she's got these uh orange cats which are like super fluffy um, with this super long fur. This feels so nice to spin. Um, this hasn't been washed because I found that when I wash it with my normal process it's um, uh, it, it tries to felt itself and mat up quite a lot. Um, so uh, I'm gonna wash everything else for a second time with some more gentle wool wash and uh, so this is this uh, might look a little bit weirdly more lumpy than some of the other ones and a little bit over twisted but I don't know, it's, it's probably fine. Um, and this one I've got 43 yards. So with the first one we had uh, 52, uh, then 51, and then 43 uh, yards of that. And this is 60% cat hair. Um, and I'd still say that like maybe this is my, my inconsistency, so that just sort of looks fine. It's when we get to some of the other ones which don't have the South Down blend in. Because I think South Down's a very short staple and very, very crimpy. Um, so the l yarn it makes is very kind of lofty and bouncy, um, whereas cat fur and rabbit fur, um, they're both very kind of soft and silky and um, the fibres are a lot longer on the cat especially. So I think that's what's contributing to packing it down and making it quite a lot shorter, but still kind of 52 to 43 is you know pretty normal. Um, the alpaca. This is 100% alpaca. I've had it. Uh, I've had the fibre set in my stash for ages. I've only properly got into spinning uh, recently. This is where we really start seeing the difference in length because alpaca fibres are soft and long. And uh, this is 32 yards uh, as opposed to the 52 that we got from the South Downs. There's a real, real difference uh, with that that I've noticed. Um, so that's quite amazing. And also, obviously, it is beautiful. Uh, it's in a bay black. This is from an alpaca. This is either from Willow or Kalua. I bought a fleece from each of them, but they were not uh, labelled. So this is from one of them. Uh, I pet Willow when I went and walked her. When I was uh, went walking alpacas. So uh, yeah, 
also like all of this is from local um, sheep people. Uh, but the real surprise, and this was the one that I spun second, so I'd done the South Down, and then this is Shetland. Um, so I sort of spun the same yarn in the same way, so it's kind of like supposed to be thin, and there might there's probably a lot of variation. It probably created a very different yarn because um, I was still a very new spinner. Um, so this is a local Shetland wool, and this is 23 yards so this one we got 52 yards off and this one we got 23 yards that's so wildly different <laughs> and I just really really was not expecting that so um yeah I think the difference is grist I think basically this is a yarn where um there's less wool per centimeter I suppose and with this one there's just it's more dense so uh, there's more like wool fibers per centimetre and that's what the difference is but it's amazing to see side by side what the difference is and also uh, to see how the length changes because I consider kind of how the skein looks to be based on what I've wrapped it around so these ones were wrapped around chair backs but sometimes I've wrapped things around like little tins or whatever and I've ended up with these super short teeny little mini skeins because I've wrapped it around something smaller but despite the fact that these were wrapped around the same back of the same chair the skeins look really different. That was also something I had not expected. Like, if I line up the bottoms, then the, the top has got that much kind of difference in it because this one's gone out so much wider. Um, so, yeah. And that was also something I was not expecting. So if you're also uh, in a situation where you're spinning or, um, I'm going to be honest, a good part of this is just for future me. <laughs> And like my own reference, um, that's something which you might not have expected and might want to think about and something that maybe the really experienced spinners won't tell you. <clears throat> not because they're trying to hide it, but just because they won't. Um, and I thought I'd just talk about what all of these different yarns feel like. So I was having a bit of a squish of them last night. Um, and I thought that was quite, uh, it was quite interesting to talk about. So this is very bouncy, this yarn. It's like you squeeze it and it like, does a lot of resistance back um, in this one and that's really nice it's really it's really joyful it feels like there's nothing it feels like it's sending you away like it's a foam and you want to like bounce off it um, and I thought that's interesting that that's that very bouncy springy characteristic of the wool I think people describe it as lofty um, everything has been prepped in the same way by the way it's all been carded because I don't have functional wool combs so that's just what happens <laughs> I've got some I made myself in there. Okay. Um, so yeah, everything's been carded and spun on a drop spindle, um, Z-twist singles and um, uh, S-twist plying, and everything's two-ply as well. So like everything's sort of consistent. Um, so yeah, this is a really sort of bouncy springy one. The colour is kind of a an off-white and nice sort of creamy shade um, from a, a dirty, dirty sheep, which produces so much lanolin when you wash it. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, and this is just kind of a nice, soft, bouncy yarn. Um, and everything that I'm spinning is uh, like fleece to yarn. So I've done all of the all of the prep and the, everything from like a raw fleece. The Angora was feeling uh, last night and thinking it's got that same like bounce to it because it is still 80% of the previous wool, but there's something about it which kind of grips you. It's not like sticky like um chewing gum would be sticky or like uh spilled coca-cola in your car that's been sat there for a couple of days would be like sticky but it's sort of um i think it's kind of like velvety especially on the bit so you can see a little bit more kind of angora in and the color's a bit darker so it's got this kind of real velvety texture it's still got quite a lot of bounce but a little bit less and it's quite it's quite a dramatic difference it doesn't have that same like I'm a send you away sort of thing to it. So it's still quite squishy, but it's much more velvety and soft. And this is with only 20% angora in it. So it's eight grams of South Down wool and um, two grams of angora. And it's just makes an absolutely massive difference. So and it's kind of nice to know that if you're buying a commercially made yarn and it's got 20% of something in it, that probably does change the characteristic quite a lot. So it, you know, maybe makes it worth the value difference if it's more expensive. 
So yeah, this is squishier, a lot less bouncy, and a lot more kind of sticky, velvety. It feels like it's kind of drawing you in a bit, whereas the South Elm is like, spring away, like a trampoline. This is more like, come and snuggle, I guess. This one is again less squishy, it's the 60% cat fur. Um, this has got like a real kind of soft and silky kind of smoothness to it. Um, especially on the bits where you've got the more sort of cat hairs. This is, this is, um, I said 60%. Um, it's definitely not got that same kind of bounce and return. Um, and we can probably see that by the loss of about 10 yards of, of length. So it's got that much percentage of density. And yeah, it does feel, it feels like, um, whereas the first one was like bouncing you away. This one kind of feels like you're, you're sliding off it almost. So um, it's not got that velvety kind of stickiness that's holding you in with it. This is very much more of a, of a slide off kind of one. Um, it is weird to try and describe yarn based on kind of what you want to do when you hold it. But um, I don't know if there's proper official terms that you're supposed to use. <laughs> but that's how that feels. And this is the 100% alpaca. This is the most kind of silky it almost feels like water in a way I don't know if that's a, a fair description like it feels very slippery and silky like when you hold satin and it just kind of wants to like slip through your hands it almost feels like cool to the touch compared to some of the other ones which is which is weird because it's yeah I don't know if that's just because the skein is skinnier or something like that or it's been sat on the table longer or anything but yeah it feels kind of almost almost cool to the touch and very very silky and sort of slippery um this feels like it's turning into <laughs> it's not i'm just trying to describe the differences um and uh yeah it's got uh i don't know if this is just because it's um not as much yardage but it's got kind of quite a nice bit of drape to it like when you hold it Especially compared to when you hold this guy, which is like 100% firm. And then this guy's really floppy. And you can really see the difference. Um, yeah, you've done that one. These guys are all quite firm and this one's really floppy. So it's got like a softer, I think this is called a hand. It's got a softer hand to it. Um, if it was fabric, we'd call it having a soft, like more of a drape. Um, so yeah. That's what the alpaca is like, a very kind of silky, watery, kind of cool feeling. And then this is the Shetland wool, and this has what my best friend and I describe as wool crunch, <laughs> as a desirable characteristic. So this has got what may even be an audible um, amount of squish to it. So when you when you squish this, it, it, like, it crunches. So this feels like... Um, yeah, I was trying to describe it based on like what I want to want to do with it. It's like you want to put it in a coat. <laughs> you want it to be like good, sturdy outerwear. Um, it feels like stepping on leaves in the autumn. It's got that kind of nice crunch to it. So you just kind of want to squish it and um, feel it it's like crumple. But it also like it does spring back and stuff because it's it's wool and that's where. So you're not like crushing fibres that then remain crushed like if you did stand on a leaf so yeah it's got a real kind of crunch to it drapey wise I think it's again quite quite firm like nothing compared to the alpaca <laughs> uh, so yeah this is like a really quite firm quite stiff quite crunchy um feeling yarn and it just yeah you you want to squish it in a different way you don't want to bounce off it like a trampoline you want to fall into it like a like a bed, like a um, like a carpet or something like that. Like it's got a really nice crunchy squish to it. And this is the twenty three yards. So this is the this is the shortest one. So I think this has probably got the I don't know if it's the highest grist or the lowest grist, but it's got the most dense yarn. And the Shetland fibers are really long. So whereas the South Down kind of reads a little bit more as that long when like a card and working with it, the Shetland fibers are, are much more like that. And you can see that in the locks as well. Um, and it's got this interesting color variation. So with the South Down, it's pretty much, there is a little bit of variation 
it's um, got some areas where it's a little bit more pure white and a little bit off white. I don't know if that's just heck loads of lanolin I've just not effectively washed out, but um, the alpaca fibre was going everywhere. The, the black is not part of the South Down. I think that's just bits of alpaca that are in the same box. <laughs> um, so there's there's not very much variation on this. This is kind of somewhere between like white and cream. I imagine it's probably not even showing up too much in this in this lighting situation. Um, so it's, it's pretty much the same, but kind of different shades of cream. I think there's going to be some variation just because it's like natural. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a bridal colour. And the kind of thing that stereotypically someone would be like, what's the difference? It's like white and cream. And then you just have, have some idiot man that's just like, it's sort of white. <laughs> Like they're all, all of the colours are the same, so yeah, you'd have to be you'd have to be really looking and nerding out um, over the yarn to really see the colour variation, or you'd have to be quite like a textile nerd. I think if you were um, if you were just like a casual observer, you would see this as all exactly the same colour, which you wouldn't be able to do with the with the Shetland because it's got this um, kind of like white to it. It sort of looks like when you know when people start going grey, and they've just got. Like their hair's black all over, but then they're starting to get like the little grey bits like around their temples or whatever. That's that's kind of what this feels like. And the black fur, I think, maybe almost exclusively, because I didn't see the sheep before it was sheared. I just went and picked up the whole thing of fleece and saw the sheep in a field like three fields over, <laughs> which was lovely by itself, and Googled what the sheep looks like um, when she told me about the breed. I think this like black fur might be um closer to their bodies and the like gray bits is the is the little tip that's been more exposed to the sun and the elements and stuff so i think that's part of where it gets kind of the softness of wool and the um that like crunchier resistance because it's the bit that's been more like the the tips of the locks i think it is um so when you look at a bit that's got the gray in the fibre sort of that long and that much of it's black and then like the whole rest of it it's a kind of like grey colour um, and interestingly on another sheep from this um, from the same like farm farm? I don't know, flock I got three sheep fleeces uh, one of them is a Hebridean mixed Shetland and that's like grey and then the top little bit of it is kind of like an Albany orange which I thought was interesting and I think that's kind of the same thing so some parts of it have been more exposed to the sunlight than others um, so yeah it, that's that's basically all I wanted to all I wanted to say. It's been really interesting working with all the different types of fleece and I think if I hadn't tried to do an equal box of mini skeins, which are <laughs> I don't know how helpful it is um, to have such different yardage but the same like grammage so I mean I'll ask her if this is the kind of thing that she likes or if it's easier to have like the same amount of yardage um, as opposed to the same amount of, of mass, like what, what she thinks is going to be easier to work with. But yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. I was absolutely blown away by the differences um, and like the differences in the characteristic and feel um, of all of these different yarns made with different materials. I mean, I was expecting it because I knew this guy was crunchy and I knew this guy wasn't. And I knew that Angora was like the softest floof Um that you've ever feel if you put your kind of hands in um and obviously i know what it's like to pet my friend's cats but uh, <laughs> yeah i just thought it was interesting that it provided something so different even when uh it's the same weight um the same sort of mass of yarn uh has created something very very different so yeah um I'll see you in the next video, whenever that is produced. I will be uploading this at least a week late, uh, at least a week later than when I filmed it. Uh, and in the meantime, remember, you can always fit a lot of rubles in a dead wrap. See you later.